Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will start in just a moment. I'll let some more folks join. All right, looks like we've got a lot of people on board uh, this morning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Matt Mangriotis. I'm the Director of Product Management for the Point to Multipoint Solutions from Cambium Networks. Uh, welcome. Today, we're going to talk about uh, lots of the portfolio. I want to touch on a couple of different things and then get into uh, a little bit of great news about our uh, latest addition to the Point to Multipoint portfolio, the CN Ranger product. So without further ado, let's get going. As you know, uh, Cambium Networks has a, uh, an affordable, reliable portfolio uh, of various wireless connectivity products uh, that support everything from long range, high capacity microwave links, all the way down to indoor Wi-Fi solutions that, uh, that are really great for a synergistic kind of uh, compatibility with the rest of the portfolio. All of this is managed by CN Maestro. So we have really world-class portfolio of wireless products that can support any need. Uh, we like to refer to it as the wireless fabric. Uh, and now we're introducing what we're calling the intelligent edge. And I'll get into uh, what that means exactly uh, down the road here. Again, another look at the portfolio, but going from all the way from 245 kilometers uh, with the high capacity, long range backhaul links, microwave and unlicensed backhaul links and then moving to the right through the access layer, point to multipoint products, and then down to the in the home or uh, local type of Wi-Fi connections where you can connect clients and devices uh, using the Wi-Fi products. We also have an industrial internet of things product portfolio uh, with the CN Reach products uh, that cover a lot of the license bands, a lot of the license frequencies, and all again managed by our cloud-based management platform called CN Maestro. Really great tool to view, monitor, manage, configure the network. It's a great, uh, great tool to have in your in your portfolio. So obviously everybody uh, needs more bandwidth, and the the needs are ever increasing. So how do we provide that? Um, really, Cambium Networks is a long history of of high reliable, highly reliable products that uh, do lots of stuff through tough terrain tough temperature ranges, um, really tough environments. It's a great track record. We have a, a you know more than 10 years, more than 15 years actually of, of uh, known quantity out there. It's, uh, it's a huge amount of reliability built into the product and high quality. And with Medusa, uh, the latest innovations from the point to multipoint product, we can triple or better the capacity versus the last uh, go round of the product line. We have lots and lots of these in the field. People who have used it are really enjoying the benefits that it provides uh, to the, the network. Um, we continue to advance and update software on this device to make it better and even more capacity, more spectral efficiency. Right now, it's the five gigahertz 450M can do 14 by 14 uh, multi-user MIMO, which means you can talk to up to seven subscribers at once in the downlink. And with the latest software, uh, which I'll share right now, 16.0, uh, we just released a beta. With this latest software, we now include uplink multi-user MIMO. This is really an incredible feature, and I, I can't emphasize this enough. This is something that nobody else in the industry does. Uh, so not only in the downlink, we can perform multi-user MIMO, but now, multiple subscribers can be talking at the same time and be received by the access point at once, uh, uplink MuMIMO. So we're doing now increasing the total bandwidth that's supported by the sector um, and can support high uplink requirements uh, applications such as video surveillance. 
So if, if needed, uh, you can tune the Medusa product to have a high uplink percentage and now utilize that multi-user MIMO in the uplink, uh, thereby providing the a huge amount of bandwidth in the uplink uh, for things like video surveillance if you want to. In a normal residential type of uh, deployment where high downlink is still preferred, this further enables you to do uh, more uplink and really makes the, the whole network more efficient by uh, allowing more uplink bandwidth um, overall. We also enabled the aux port on 450M, which so now you can use the PoE uh, to do bridging or just power another device uh, using the PoE from that device, from the uh, 450 Medusa product. Another cool feature in this software release is the ability to support what we're calling PTP 450B. So the 450Bs that are out there today um, uh, will continue to act as SMs, um, but we will be start selling new models uh, that are PTP capable 450Bs. Um, at the same price, really. Uh, so what you can do is take those devices, use them as PTP links, or with a software GUI change, uh, you can simply use them as SMs. So we're adding a, uh, another PTP variant to the portfolio as well. So lots of cool stuff coming in 16.0. The beta was released last week. We encourage you to go to the beta site and download it and uh, give it a try, see what it does for you. I do wanna to touch on three gig uh, Medusa as well. So in three gig, in the US, there's lots of stuff going on with the three gig spectrum um, with CBRS and the uh, various things that go along with that. We're getting more spectrum. It's a tiered sharing system. I won't spend a lot of time on this. We could spend hours talking about what this means and how it works, um, but I won't do that today. Uh, most folks in the US have heard about what's coming in the three gig spectrum. And I just wanted to point out that with our three gig 450 portfolio, we are going to be ready. We're gonna be ready for this um, and we're gonna be talking to the SAS and uh, be certified under the new rules, the part 96 rules, uh, as soon as they become available. We expect that to happen early next year and it will require CN Maestro as the bridge or the domain proxy uh, to make that communication. We are partnering with uh, several SAS providers, in fact, to make sure that we uh, have you know, at least dual source on this critical resource of the uh, of the SAS communication. So we, there are a lot of question marks about competitors in this space, whether they're gonna be able to, whether they want to participate in the CBRS, but we know uh, that the 450 platform will participate and we will be certified. We are shipping now the, uh, the 450M in um, under part 90 rules under the existing 365 rules, uh, but that will be, again, that will be certified under part 96 as soon as we are able to do that. And that'll be before the, before the end of the year or very early next year. Uh, we are also working on a 450B variant of this product, a, a new SM in the three gig space, which is coming er very early in Q2 uh, next year. And really the, the whole idea behind this is that we're operating under the old rules today, and as soon as the new rules come into play, we will operate under part 96, the new rule set, without even changing equipment. Simply a software update, and now you need to take advantage of the communication with the SAS uh, to do that. But it's a simple migration over to the new rule set. We're also working with a lot of our customers who want to try this out uh, under the what they're calling the ICD, the initial commercial deployment. Um, we're, we're working to get them our customers on the list for that. So if you're interested in that, please uh, shoot me an email, talk to your sales staff and uh, try and we'll, we'll add you to the list of who wants to try this out. So the three gig Medusa, again, uh, another bringing Medusa to another product in the portfolio. Again, this is, we are expecting to do about three times the capacity versus an existing 450 sector. We have some of these uh, in beta trials right now. It's going fairly well. We're working out some of the, the issues and bugs that we've found and things are, are operating pretty smoothly already. It's a pretty impressive uh, product again. Um, and we're doing it in eight by eight fashion this time instead of 14 by 14 uh, for a couple of very good reasons. One, the uh, the product would be very, very large. As you go down in frequency, the antenna elements get larger, the spacing between them gets larger. And if we were to do 14 by 14 in this space, it would be an enormous product that would be uh, very heavy. If you've seen this in person, uh, you'll know that this is a, even a little larger than the five gig Medusa. And it uh, becomes a little unwieldy if we go any larger than, than what it is. 
also the cost goes up uh, somewhat exponentially as you get much, much bigger. So we did limit it to eight by eight, which still provides you the ability to talk to up to four subscribers at once. Um, and we do believe that this will give you about three times the capacity versus the existing sector. Another benefit of this product is that it's a, at higher power levels. We're able to reach the ERP maximums uh, allowed by this band uh, around the world, pretty much. Very, very cool stuff. Um, one difference or change is that it's now DC powered uh, versus PoE, and that's because of the power consumption, because we're doing much higher power transmit power. Uh, we require DC powering. And we'll we'll go into more detail about that uh, down the road. We have some guides uh, with that as well. Just to show you a little bit about the performance that's going on in here. Um, the left is a non MuMIMO mode and 20 meg channel. We're showing about 125 megs of throughput, which is pretty normal. Um, and in the right side, we're, we turn on multi-user MIMO, and now we're about you know four times that, or almost 500 megs. So it's exactly um, doing what it's supposed to do when we're talking to four subscribers at once. Of course, this is lab scenario and best case, uh, but it's showing that that's what we're what's what we're able to do with the product. Uh, I do like to point out that we have this white paper on, online that you can go read, uh, but it talks about the differences between using 450. Uh, versus LTE, when you would want to use one versus the other, it, it kind of highlights the various product characteristics and uh, which which technology uh, performs better. Uh, in many ways, the 450 outperforms any LTE solution that's available out there today. And that's really in terms of total capacity, uh, the ability to service a subscriber with more data, uh, uplink certainly, um, interference mitigation capabilities, the total cost. In, in many, many ways, the 450 is, is the better choice. Now, if you're looking for range and coverage, um, specifically LTE has many uh, evolutions in the ASIC chipset that make it really beneficial in terms of using it for the coverage piece. And uh, let's get into some details about that. Reason we are going into the LTE game, uh, and the, probably the reason why you're on this webinar, um, we are launching a product uh, in the LTE space. Cambium is getting into the LTE. And you might ask why, why would you do that when you just said that uh, the 450 product outperforms LTE in many ways? Well, if I'm a, a small WISP, I really need that coverage. I need that better range and coverage. So that's like the number one, uh, the number one reason that folks utilize LTE is because it, it does really well with range and coverage. A lot of the techniques that are built into the chipset um, provide that mobile, it was it was designed as a mobile standard and it provides that connection in the downlink. Um, OFDMA, uh, a lot of the sub-channelization characteristics, a lot of the way the resource blocks are, are defined and, and distributed among the channel uh, really lend it well to be a, a great tool for coverage and range. And so that's the number one reason that folks look at, uh, at LTE. Another good reason, and as you get a little bigger, cash flow becomes a, a huge issue. So as you're growing and you need to add more customers to your network, uh, inexpensive options on the SM side uh, become paramount. And that's really addressed by LTE because now you can look at various vend vendors who have options available um, that could be really, really inexpensive options. Now, is it always the right choice to choose the least expensive option? Uh, probably not. But uh, having the LTE chipset allows you to build a subscriber, allows us to build a subscriber that'll be competitive in price. Um, whereas a little bit, when we talk about FPGA based products, which the 450 line is, the inherent cost of building uh, an FPGA based product is a little bit more. It, it's much more flexible on our end, but it is a little costlier to, to build. So the LTE CPE options are, are less expensive. And then as you get big, uh, as you have lots and lots of subscribers in your network, and you're maybe looking to do something different, or you have investors that uh, want to see a, a bright future for the for the uh, company, investors really look to the standards. And when you when they read, uh, you know, media pieces, everyone talks about LTE and how great the, the standard is. So that's where the focus becomes. Um, you don't want to necessarily be tied to a single proprietary vendor when you can utilize a uh, standards-based product like LTE. So that's the third main reason why folks look at it. 
And what are we doing as Cambium? Uh, we're really adopting the standard. We're not reinventing anything. We're not uh, creating a brand new chipset or anything like that. We're utilizing existing LTE chipsets. We're combining them in a somewhat unique way, uh, but we're utilizing those chipsets to bring a system that provides a low cost SM as well as takes advantage of all those area interface features we talked about uh, that, that make it a better product for range and coverage. Very, very cool stuff. Um, and there's there's some alternatives out there. There's some choices out there already. Um, but we've found that a lot of those choices are either too complex. Uh, you have to worry about the infrastructure equipment, like the SIM cards, the EPCs, the, the all the gateways and things that go in the NOC. Um, and where folks have tried to alleviate that, they've, we see some opportunity to do that better. Um, we also think that the big iron guys are a little too costly, right? Uh, there are there are a couple inexpensive options out there, but by and large, going LTE is, is pretty expensive. Um, we also find that the feature set is lacking in terms of a fixed service provider. We, as Cambium, know how to do this properly, uh, fo focused on fixed services. Uh, we know the service provider market, and we believe we know the needs uh, of that market. So we think we can do this in a, in a better way. All right, our goals are to remove the cost and complexity associated with LTE, yet utilize those LTE inter air interface features that make it very advantageous. We will have a higher power radio in the beginning to take advantage of the high limits in the 2.5 gig band. Um, we're going to leverage our expertise in the robust and reliable outdoor uh, SM or CPE. And the most important thing is we're, we're adding Maestro support and retaining all of the feature sets that you guys rely on to operate a fixed wireless network. It's called CN Ranger. Um, we are bringing those necessary features uh, and the focus on fixed wireless because that's what we think is, is lacking in, of what's out there in the field. We may not be the first company to market, but we believe we can do this the right way. So going back to that, uh, that white paper just a bit, um, we talked about LTE versus 450, and then we say, well, so now we have 450 out there, but if we need that range and coverage uh, aspect, uh, what does our LTE system do that you know, the, the existing solutions may not do, uh, how does it do better? And so you can see in the, on the right side there, I added another column with the, uh, the Harvey balls that uh, discuss which uh, aspects are a little bit better. So we think we can do better in infrastructure cost. We think we'll have a better customer experience overall uh, than the existing stuff that's out there. It's still gonna be LTE at the end of the day. So the performance characteristics should be roughly on par with the other uh, standards-based products that exist. To go over LTE a little bit, uh, a traditional system really has all these different components. The RAN, uh, the eNodeB, or the access point, what we used to call the access point, uh, that's that's covered by this, this eNodeB concept. And then there's the evolved packet core. Now, in a traditional LTE system, this is a, a pretty complex set of products or set of uh, infrastructure items that are required at the NOC or at the uh, the base of the operations and this is uh, complicated and expensive and it, it has a lot of different functions in it what we're doing uh, and, and then the other piece of that that network is the SM of course or the UE and so that's a traditional system that has all these various components that do all these different things in terms of you know uh, authentication management of the entities that are attached uh, all the gateways that are serving the, uh, the, the connections if you will and what are we doing? We're actually combining everything uh, in the baseband unit. So we're going to have a concept of a baseband unit and remote radio head that'll make up the RAN and EPC, basically, in uh, into a single uh, location. So at every tower site, you'll have a baseband unit, and then every sector will have a remote radio head. Those remote radio heads connect to that baseband unit, and then it has all the function of the RAN and the EPC. Uh, all of the the management, um, all of the canopy requirements are all contained in that uh, that unit. And then you'll wirelessly connect to the SM, which has the functions of all the of the, all the required LTE uh, functions as well as the canopy functions in the SM. Meaning we're adding not only the the LTE stuff 
which is typically layer three and and uh, tunneling, we are adding the ability to operate this network as a layer two network as well. Um, so again, containing, virtualizing, and embedding the EPC uh, within the BBU and, and making it much more like a simple fixed LTE solution. So uh, the difference on the left side is the, the 450, which has the base, basically the baseband and radio uh, RF transmitter in the, in the single unit. Now we're splitting that architecture into a, an 8x8 baseband unit and then remote radio heads. And being 8x8 means it can drive up to four 2x2 two two radios, uh, which can do four 90-degree sectors. Now at launch, we will support three 2x2 two two sectors, uh, but we will add the capability to do a fourth one um, before too long. Uh, or alternatively, you can operate a single 8x8 eight eight radio from that baseband unit. So it has 8x8 eight eight channels, basically, and you can operate you know, two, uh, four 2x2s, two two, two 4x4s, or a single 8x8 eight eight radio uh, from that same uh, BBU. Looking at kind of the tower deployment, you have your remote radio heads connected via fiber to the baseband unit. You have DC power going to all of those uh, all those units individually, and we'll have sector antennas that attach to those uh, those remote radio head units as well. Um, so the baseband unit is at the base of the tower, basically. It's a little bit more flexible architecture, so we're splitting that to to give you the ability to do a single sector first, and then you can uh, change and operate uh, add more sectors to that uh, site as needed. Another nice thing is that it's not frequency dependent. Uh, the baseband unit is is uh, all the digital piece and not the RF. So you can add, you can mix and match two and a half gig, uh, three gig, or even five gig when that comes out. Um, and it's kind of future proofing for some of the feature set like license assisted architecture that'll allow you to to aggregate uh, both the unlicensed and licensed bands. And then again, makes it easier for maintenance if necessary at the base of the tower with the baseband unit. So first release coming at the end of the year uh, or very early in January, we have, we're covering the 2.5 band, which includes bands, TDD bands 38, 40, and 41. Uh, of most interest um, at the beginning here will be band 41, which is uh, typically used in the EBS BRS uh, band in the US and elsewhere in the world that band 41 is uh, in frequent use as well. So that's uh, the 2.5 band. We will follow on uh, about mid next year with the band 48. Uh, it'll cover bands 42, 43, and 48. So from 3.4 to 3.8, including uh, the CBRS band. So what are we talking about at the first release? Uh, well, the baseband unit will come out uh, supporting release 10, um, but but I have a plus there. Uh, and that means that the, the baseband unit will evolve and we will support all the way up through release 13 uh, using the same hardware. It's a uh, simple, it's, it'll be software upgradable uh, through release 13. Um, it'll be eight by eight via hardware and be able to drive 320 degree sectors uh, via fiber, 64 SMs per sector. Uh, and then we will continue to enhance that. We, we do know that that's not enough subscribers. Uh, we will have the ability to support more subscribers as we move forward in time uh, via software updates. So we, and with the remote radio head, uh, it'll be a two by two, two watts per port power. Uh, again, supported by fiber. It says 90 degree sector. We're actually doing a, our, our sector antenna, the Cambium sector will be a 110 degree sector uh, with very sharp roll off. Uh, I wanna point out the fact that uh, we have some, what we perceive to be competitive advantages here with our sector antenna. It's a 110 degree width that'll have a very sharp roll off and the intent will be that uh, it supports what's called n equals one or the frequency reuse of one through three sector deployment in a much better way than a lot of the the competition that's out there today and then at the beginning we'll have a cat4 cpe or subscriber module that's uh really capable uh it's uh, one transmit chain two receive chains and it's kind of your basic unit it's a very low cost unit we will support that with or supplement that rather with the cat6 device uh, before too long. So it's really exciting stuff. Uh, we're getting ready to launch this. We will have beta testing of this product in the, the November, December timeframe, and uh, we'll be shipping it in volume in January. 
A couple other things that I want to point out, reasons why we're doing this and reasons why we believe this will be uh, kind of better than what's out there already today. Um, you know, people that are using Cambium equipment expect high quality and they expect, uh, you know, release quality kind of uh, product, not beta type product. LTE is new to us, uh, but we're working hard to make sure that it's a polished product before it comes out. So it's, uh, we are working very hard to make sure that uh, we don't have these kinds of issues, uh, similar issues to other uh, competitors. It's a simple setup. Uh, we're removing that complexity of the EPC and we're moving it, the intelligence to the edge, basically meaning we're moving that EPC to each BBU. You do not have to have the all of the packet, every packet go back to the core. It can be contained at the BBU itself and um, and we're moving that intelligence to the edge. So it's an integrated virtualized EPC. Again, focused on providing uh, the features that are required for fixed wireless, uh, not a mobile network being scaled down to a fixed, but a fixed purpose-built fixed solution. Our transmit power in the SM is a little bit higher than what the standard is. Uh, we think that'll provide a little bit of advantage in the uplink, which will allow you to go even further. Uh, we know we have uh, lots of uh, models um, in terms of the total cost of ownership. We're, we're modeling that out uh, to, to show that we can uh, be effective in terms of total cost of ownership of, this, of the network. Uh, again, I mentioned the antenna. Uh, we, we're hard. At, we're just about done uh, designing the antenna for the sector level on the LTE product, the Ranger product, and it really optimizes the use of the spectrum much like we did with the beam forming capabilities of the Medusa product, uh, we're taking that knowledge and expertise in antenna design and applying it to N equals one type deployments with, with LTE. The flexibility of the split architecture, we believe gives us an advantage over some of the competition that have all outdoor type of fixed units. Uh, and layer two, right? Layer two is important to many folks. Uh, if you can operate in layer two, it makes things simpler across the network. Um, with the transmit power of the uh, remote radio head, that also may, may provide an advantage. Uh, we know that there's some high power devices out there and we're working on one of those as well uh, down the road. I want to point out that, uh, you know, Cambium Networks is not just about point products or single products that stand on an island. It's really a complete solution. We have the, you know, Cambium care that's out there, 24 by seven support if needed. Um, Everybody's out there, you know, if you need ele elevated care, uh, we have that option available. Yes, it comes at an additional cost, uh, but we can provide direct access to level three, uh, tier, you know, tier three support, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, you can have a service account manager if you need it uh, as well. So there's a distinct advantage uh, to utilizing Cambium support. We, we are here for you. And also we have the community. And I always point out the community on every webinar that I do uh, because it's a valuable resource. It's free to use. Go in there, sign up, look around. Uh, searching is great. The knowledge base continues to be populated with really useful information. And as this new product comes out, I'm sure there will be tons and tons of new stuff uh, posted to the forum. Um, every time we have a new product, there's lots of questions about it. And these, these get answered and documented in the community forum. It's a great place to go look and read about new uh, things. In fact, this webinar will be posted there uh, shortly after it's completed. Social media, of course, we're all over social media and we like to uh, be there. Um, feel free to look me up, uh, Cambium Matt. I'm all over the place and uh, shoot me a, a tweet or a text or LinkedIn notice uh, and I'll get it. And that's about it. I will at this point take some questions. I see there's some in there. Uh, hang on just a second, let me open that up. So the question about uh, CN Ranger, is it being developed for the TV white space band? Uh, not at this time. So we are focused on right now, the, the bands that I went through, it's 2.5 and 3.5. They're really, um, those are the, the main focus of the product line. We will, in, as I just mentioned uh, a couple of days ago to my management, I, I think we need to keep an eye on TV white space. It is certainly very interesting. It is, uh, 
it's an, an interesting place to play. Uh, right now, the rules in both in every location that I'm aware that it's being used are not really great for the operator. And until those things change, it doesn't make a lot of sense to uh, get into that game, in my opinion. Um, however, uh, it is certainly a, a good idea to keep an eye on TV white space. So we, we are definitely staying in touch with what's going on in that band, um, but it will uh, likely be later before that is uh, enabled or we come out with a product in that band. Let's see. Um, someone's interested in layer two, that's great. That That is something that we will have in day one. A uh, question about whether we will have some LTE-like features in the PMP line, uh, meaning like carrier aggregation. Uh, we did talk about at one time allowing carrier aggregation in the 450 product line. Uh, it's a little less feasible uh, these days to do that. We are supporting 40 meg channels, and we believe that gives you a pretty good uh, amount of throughput. Uh, but it's very difficult to do carrier aggregation with the 450 architecture the way it is. Uh, we will certainly support uh, carrier aggregation in the future on the CN Ranger product line. Uh, that is part of the uh, the roadmap as we have it. So that is coming for sure. In terms of SM options uh, for Ranger, uh, as I mentioned in 2.5, we will have a CAT4 device first. Um, we will then, mid next year, we will be releasing the 3 gig variant, uh, both remote radio head and CP or, or SM. And that SM, I'm expecting to launch uh, the 3 gig as a CAT6 right out of the gate. So it's a very, very, um, it'll be a more powerful um, SM on the 3 gig band. And we will go back and do the simil a similar CAT6 device in 2.5 as well. And beyond that, we will certainly advance um, SMs as we get forward, meaning CAT12, CAT16, as, as we move forward in time. Um, the SM, the initial CAT4 device, yes, it's a 14 dB gain antenna. Uh, the CAT6 device, we expect to have a higher gain um, antenna, maybe a dish solution. That's that's kind of what we're looking at on there. So it might be closer to 18 or 19. Question on uh, bandwidth per sector. Um, 450 certainly has the advantage in terms of total band, bandwidth per sector, um, especially when you consider a two by two uh, remote radio head sector. The maximum throughput of that kind of sector, you're looking at around uh, 90 megs. Um, you will have incredible range in the 2.5 space uh, with with a 2 by 2 remote radio head in Ranger, incredible range, and better near non-line of sight capabilities. However, you're sacrificing the total throughput uh, when compared to the 450 system. So yes, if you're in need of range and coverage and near non-line of sight capabilities, Ranger is a, is a better option, typically. Um, and typically, if you're in need of capacity, and overall spectral efficiency, then 450 is the way you want to go. And the reason we're doing both of these product lines is really to cover both cases and allow you to have the right tool for the right for the job. We uh, there's a question about a dongle uh, for the CPE uh, side. Uh, we are not planning at this time to do any indoor devices um, or or dongles. There are LTE options out there uh, and available, and most uh, we are going to be 3GPP compatible uh, with the Ranger product, meaning that most LTE CPEs will work with our system. And so we will, um, at the beginning, we're really focused on getting a closed Cambium-based system out there that, that operates really well uh, among itself. Uh, but then we will start, we are actually starting to test against other competitors and other uh, products that exist in the ecosystem such that we uh, will be compatible with those as well. Can the new product be administered through Maestro? Absolutely. So Maestro support will be there in day one for CN Ranger. And that is uh, part and parcel of what we do. We want to make sure every new product we have will work with CN Maestro. Absolutely. Uh, question, will it be able to aggregate carriers from different bands? Uh, yes. Uh, down the road, when we have carrier aggregation, 
we will have carrier aggregation within the band first, and then we will support carrier aggregation between bands. So if you have multiple remote radio heads pointing in the same sector and a, an SM that's capable of receiving both, then you can aggregate that data to, to that same subscriber. So yes, that will, that will be possible uh, when we have the hardware available on the SM side. Uh, this file will be posted on the website uh, on the forum uh, when we're done. So I will. I am recording it. We will post the not only the recording but also the slides on the uh, on the forum, and uh, we'll send that out. All right. I think that's all the questions I see. And thank you very much for joining. I appreciate it. Um, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.